Hey Blender Maniacs, this is Alex Cordbard. Who else would it be for BlenderMania3D.com? And in this second part, we're going to take a look at all the different options, and not all of them, but the most important options and little tools that we have for sculpting. So let's get right into it. First thing we're going to do is change it from sculpt mode to object mode, and let's add some eyes to this character. Usually the eyes, you want to add them as separate objects, hitting Shift A, Add Mesh, UV Sphere, and then in Edit Mode, Tab, Scale it down, go into Side View, 3 on the numpad, bring it here and R90 to rotate it 90 degrees, and just place this eyeball in his eye socket, like that. Alright, cool, and then we're just going to go to the, mirror, uh, to the Modifiers tab, Add Modifier, Mirror, and there we go. And then of course select them, right click, shade smooth. And then I'm gonna hit G, Y, uh, actually they're fine where they are. All right, cool, now let's select our mesh again and go from object mode back to sculpt mode. And one thing you will notice is, as the information tells you right here, dynamic topology has been turned off. So whenever you go from object mode to back to sculpt mode, dynamic topology is not left enabled. I'm not sure why, but just make sure to re-enable dynamic topology. And with that, talking about dynamic topology, let's take a look at some of these settings because they are pretty important. And this is probably the settings that you will use the most, and that is the detail size right here, or the pixels. Now again, the higher the detail, the higher the pixels, the less detail, the lower, the smaller and finer the detail. Now, for the most part, when sculpting, you want to start off with higher detail and then work your way down to lower detail, and I'll show you exactly why that is. But for now, let's change this detail size to 6. Not 12.6, 6. There we go. And now let's draw in some some uh some eyelids here at the bottom and again keep in mind that the further zoomed in you are the smaller the detail will be here on the nose i'm going to hold down control maybe put in two creases on the nose like that and then grab the crease brush and kind of pull those in a little bit hold down shift to smooth it and that one as well. Now, let's say you have a lot of really fine detail here. I'm just gonna put in some fine detail. And the reason why you want to do bigger detail first is because if you have small detail and you wanna add in bigger detail, let's put this back to 12. Dang it, I keep doing that. <laughs> All right, back to 12. Now, this can be useful. Let's say you have a lot of small detail and you wanna reset it because you don't like the small detail. If you go back to bigger detail and draw over the smaller detail, you could see that it gets erased by the bigger detail. How cool is that? But that is also why you want to sculpt in bigger detail first and then smaller detail because if you go over with bigger detail on it, it will erase your smaller detail. So with this, let's put this to five, put the detail even smaller. Now you don't want to go uh, again, you want to go from big to medium to small detail. So this is kind of like medium small detail. Here, with the brush kind of small, I'm going to hold down control, kind of draw some crease lines under the eye, and then get the crease brush, crease these out a little bit, crease this one out, and then I hit shift to smooth it out. And then last thing that we're going to do, right there too, Last thing we're going to do is let's add a big vein on top of his head. Go to the draw brush. Again, with it still at five, we're going to draw out a vein on the top of his head like that. And you could see just like that, and then hold down the shift key to smooth it out. You can see just like that, we're starting to add quite a bit of detail already. Last thing I'm going to do is just add in some kind of lips a little bit. So drawing around the lips, holding down shift to smooth it out. And boom, there we go. 
All right, cool. Let's continue to take a look at the different options we have here. Again, that's detail size, and the more the lower the number, the more detail will be, but the more geometry you will have. So be careful with that, especially if your computer is somewhat slow. Last thing I'm going to do too is just hold down control, add in some nostrils here, and then just click here, shift to left uh, to smooth out, and just to add some geometry. All right, now let's go ahead and add, uh, let's take a look at some other options here. We have the remesh option. So the remesh option basically mirrors your geometry from one side to the other. Now this can be very useful. Let's say you forgot to turn on the X mirror option and you're, you sculpted here a lot and you forgot to mirror it on the other side. Well, here you could do that. If we select, right now it's mirroring negative x to positive x. So it's going to symmetrize this side onto this side. So we want to switch this from positive x to negative x. That way it takes this size and symmetrizes it to this side. And if we hit symmetrize, boom, you can see that it goes onto the other side. This could be useful for many different options too. You could change this from negative y to positive y. Let's say if you want a face on both sides of your mesh like that super creepy but again the symmetrize option basically symmetrizes your mesh from one uh, from one side of the axis to the other side all right I'm gonna hit control Z to undo that as I do not want my head to have two faces and then I'm gonna re-enable the X mirror option right here all right and then right here you have some other options for the remesh or symmetrize options Next is symmetry, which obviously you saw before. This is the mirror, and it can mirror your mesh. Right now it's mirrored to the X, but you can also mirror it to the Y. So if I draw here, it will also mirror to the Y over here. And of course, mirroring is very, very useful so that you don't have to do it twice. Now, what we're going to take a look at over here is actually the, uh, the stroke method. Right now it's set to spaced, and this is the stroke method that we have for our brushes. You can see the spacing is set to 10%, and we also have uh, options to have it jitter, etc. So with the spacing at 10%, you can see what it gives us. If we increase the spacing to, let's say, 200 or more, it will basically space it out and have a divide in between because it's spacing it out. Now this could be very useful if you want to add like dots like that to your character. Again, the stroke is spaced out so there's a break in between. And this this is just the space brush. I'm going to put this back to 10%. I keep inputting completely wrong numbers in this tutorial. All right. This is set to the spaced percent or the spaced brush. We also have different brushes. So we have the anchored brush, which is really cool. So it anchors it in the spot, and then you drag it out to increase the radius of it. You could see what that gives us. And this could be very good for, uh, like we see here, adding some cheeks to our character or something. Again, the anchored brush anchors it in the middle, and then you could drag it out to increase the influence. And this works for any of these brushes. Right now, I'm just using the draw brush. Next, we have other brushes, such as the airbrush. Airbrush is kind of like space, however, it has more of an airbrush feel and it's a lot more intensive. And of course, I'm not going to go over every single one of these, but you could check them out. The line one, or yeah, the line one is kind of interesting. You could drag it out and draw a line and it will basically sculpt across that line right there. And then we have, for example, drag dot, where you could put a dot and then drag it out anywhere and if you let go, it places it there. So those are some of the different brush presets that you could have, and you could play around with all the different ones. Also, we have the smooth stroke right here, which basically will smooth out your stroke as you draw the brush. And of course, we have the fall off here. Right now, it's set to smooth, which gives us this result right here. It kind of smooths it out. However, you could set this to whatever you want. For example, if we want it to be more of a plateau, we could set it to constant, and now you could see what we get there. It's just constant. And again, you could change a lot of the brush presets how you want them right there. And I'm going to change this back to space. So that's the different stroke methods 
feel free to play around with the different options. It's pretty self-explanatory, but you could get many different results and looks using this. Next is the texture option. You could actually sculpt a texture onto your mesh. How cool is that? Let's go ahead and do just that. First thing we need to do is get a texture. We're going to go to textures.com and type in scales. Now you can use a color texture, any kind of image that you want really, but this works best if the texture is black and white and it's seamless. For this, we're going to use this texture right here and then download the height map right there. Now I've already downloaded it. So once you do go back into blender, click new, and then we need to go to the texture options right here, open, and go ahead and open in that texture. Going back to the sculpt option, you can see our texture is right here. There we go. And now, this is very important for the dynamic topology. Let me re-enable that. The dynamic topology detail size. You can see at detail size 5, it doesn't really do much. It's just kind of like jagged little pixelated mesh. And that is because the texture needs a lot of geometry. So let's put the detail size down to 2. And now, check it out. We can sculpt in that texture. Now, depending on how close or how far you are from your mesh will depend on the size of the texture. So here you can see that the texture is a lot bigger than when I was zoomed in a lot before. And now we could just sculpt in some texture and give our character kind of more of a skin and then hold down the shift key to smooth it out how cool is that super cool so there we go just add it in and of course you could change the strength and the radius of the brush for example if we want to give them bigger scales here we could do that by just bringing it in like that and of course you could smooth it out using the shift key and smooth it out. So check that out. Just like that. Imagine if you had to sculpt these by hand. That would be ridiculous. So just like that, we've added in some texture onto our character. Super, super cool. I'm just going to smooth out the mouth a little bit. How sweet is that? So that is the texture option within sculpting. And that is pretty much the main options that you will be using in sculpting. Once again, the brush settings and a lot of these options you could find them up here you can see the remesh dynamic topology the stroke method and the texture and everything is all up here as well but you'll be using the brush the settings here the texture the different stroke methods with the different uh, brush types and also the fall offs and the spacing dynamic topology and the detail size that one is big you'll be using that a lot and of course remesh and symmetrize and symmetry to mirror it on the other axis so that is the main options that you will be using for sculpting again there are there are quite a bit more but you can mess around with them as they are not used as often or they might be used in certain cases but i just want to go over the main tools and options that you'll need for sculpting in blender so with that, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I will see you in the next one. Head on over to BlenderMania3.com and please finish this sculpt. Add as much detail. So right now we're at a detail size. And again, you might want to add the texture as the last option. You might want to uh, sculpt in some more wrinkles, some more details to this before you add the texture. The texture is usually added in last. But go ahead and finish this model. Add in some teeth. Uh, the teeth you could do again using the snake hook brush or the grab brush and just add in some teeth like we did with the horns and smooth those out add a tongue etc and go from bigger detail to smaller and smaller detail so you might go from 12 which is what we started with to 8 to 6 to 4 and then to 2 so with that i hope you enjoyed this tutorial i'll see you in the next one ciao for now au revoir